What's going on, everybody? This is Lady Luck Club here again, and we are going to dive in. We're going to dive into the financials and some numbers. We're going to start off this video with the Illinois Comptroller's decision to withhold any payments to the village of Dalton because they have not received legally mandated financial disclosures and audits from Dalton since fiscal year 2021. So they didn't receive anything from fiscal year 2022 or 2023. Two years of documents required by not just state statute. Let's go above that to federal law. Federal law requires that any government agency submits over financial disclosures and have audits done. And now, because you have the soulless miscreant that is Tiffany A. Henyard still roaming the earth upon free people, uh, telling, I guess, her staff, people that are still her goons and, and kissing her butt, they don't have to keep track of documentation and records for, for financials. And, and the sad part is, is that, you know, we're going to go over what Lori Lightfoot's investigation has yielded so far, which is some really good fruit. Um, considering the fact that I've already been saying this for months, that this heifer has been spending money. But what I didn't agree with with Lori Lightfoot was the, the amount of money she was being paid when you're talking about being in a deficit already. But it's absolutely required at this point. And I'm very pleased so far with the results that have been yielded. I have the right to my opinion. Y'all just understand that. But I, I never disagreed with the investigation itself. I just felt that it was like for the money wouldn't get us much, especially when she was, we all know Tip A. He yard is not going to cooperate with anything. And now that the hens are coming home to the yard again, <laughs> and that brain, and that, that brainless skull of hers uh, to roost. Now we see how this is all playing and aiding in the FBI investigation and also raising eyebrows to other state agencies like the uh, Illinois Comptroller's Office. Yep. So $135,000 is going to be withheld from them because Dum Dum, who needs more gum gum, is not even trying to surrender over legally required mandated financial disclosures and audits. And the worst part is with Lori Lightfoot's investigation, until she starts going to court to get court orders and or subpoenas to get documents from the merchants, because you're not going to get it from the non-existent finance department under super stupid. You're not going to get it from them. They, they don't exist and there's no documentation. They have, they're not going to release anything because it's going to really tell on herself. She's, she's really going to tell on herself. And honestly, it's going to come out either way. You know, you can't override the FBI's summons and subpoena power. You're just not. You're not smart enough to even keep up. So this is this is what we what we are now with what's happening here. So we're going to check out CBS News Chicago. Um, they did, uh, and I'm three days late on this, but I wanted to do this in a way to where I can put this video first with the, regarding the Illinois Comptroller and then go over some of the information from... Lori Lightfoot's investigation, because um, I'm just late on reporting on that. But I want you guys to see the numbers and see why the comptroller now is saying we're not sending anything because you all failed to do audits and have financial disclosures forwarded to us that are legally required. It is not a choice for Tiffany A. Henyard to do this crap. This little girl does not have an option. But because they're trying to hide how they've been spending money, they didn't get the audits done, nor do they have, you know, any financial disclosures to provide that should be released to the public through a FOIA request. It shouldn't be secret information in general. And no one has ordered these documents to be sealed. So no, she doesn't have a choice. But once you see where the money is being spent and how it's being misused and mishandled, you'll understand why she's trying to keep this under wraps by not keeping track of how she's spending the money while she stupidly forgets that there are merchants on the other end where the money was sent to in these purchases or with the bank or with the credit card companies that can have their documentation surrendered over, but it might have to come through a, some sort of a subpoena. Most companies have these guidelines in place to protect the consumers and your personal data. So they don't just release it out. Even in an investigation, they are always more than willing to cooperate but they may have some guidelines in place to say, listen, if you guys want these transactions, we're more than happy to give it to you, but you got to have a subpoena for it because we can't just release it. We want to cooperate, but we need to have 
something to cover us legally at the end of the day. Because she could sue us for releasing information in which she used an entire local municipality funds to pay for stupid crap for herself personally to benefit from it. So even with the crookedness of it all, they still, the merchants like Wayfair and Amazon and, and wherever she ordered stuff from, plus the bank, the credit card companies that have these accounts with the village of Dalton, they may have to get a subpoena. And Lori Lightfoot can get an order or a subpoena from the court. However, it's, imagine how long it would take to get a hearing for that. So the FBI can get these things faster, but they don't release information regarding their investigations because federal investigations don't operate the way a civil investigation would operate. Is I mean, they're not the police. They're the FBI, okay? So they're not going to just release contents of their investigation that they have going on. So it's unfortunate. You run into a rock and a hard place. However, I think if Lori Lightfoot is, is able to kind of maneuver around and finesse it, she might be able to get an emergency hearing of some sort or a hearing where, you know, listen, we, we need a subpoena. We need something, you know, in aiding in our investigation. We can su submit whatever we have to the FBI, but they can't necessarily release information to us. Not right now. And, and until they're at a point where they're able to do that and we see some indictments coming down the pipeline and this stuff starts to work its way through court. We're gridlocked with the documentation and we really need that because other agencies are now starting to pay attention and the Illinois Comptroller's Office is one of them. And I guarantee you all, it's based on what Lori Lightfoot has revealed and saying, hey, here's how they've been spending this money. Here's why they're not keeping track of it because they want to continue to do this under the table and get away with it. And reporting this stuff would definitely immediately put, put them into a vicarious situation legally. It, it, all it's going to do is just make this thing move faster. She's trying, to, super stupid wants to stop it because she doesn't want to go to prison for the rest of her natural born life, to which I'm advocating for. She should go to prison for natural born life. But either way, let's get started on this and we'll check this out. And then we're going to go over to Lori Lightfoot's investigation and what she has revealed so far. So we can look at some of these numbers um, because this is just, Super, super's way of just trying to hide her criminality. That's all it is. Nothing Our more. new financial problems in South Suburban Dalton tonight, it has to do with taxpayer money and the village's failure to let people know where it's being spent. Our Germont, who is to blame? Germont. Joe and Erica, according to the state, Mayor Tiffany Hanyard's administration won't even do an audit of city spending. In fact, yeah, the state that, says that, that they won't even communicate with the <laughs> controller whose job it is to oversee government spending. Mm -mm -mm. South Suburban Dalton is now on the Illinois Comptroller's this is crazy. radar. There are obvious red flags that, that your station, other stations have covered. When CBS right. News Chicago sent a Freedom of Information request to Springfield requesting Dalton's financial records, the Office of Comptroller replied back saying the office has not received audits or financial reports from the village of Dalton for fiscal years 2022 and 2023. That's a year after Mayor Tiffany. So that's a year after she was sworn in. So let's unpack this. That means essentially calendar wise, that's two years because the, the fiscal year itself, uh, I think for them is September to August, September, October. Yeah. So August, September. yeah, I think it's September to August. Maybe it's October to September, somewhere in that. Um, typically it coincides with the federal government's fiscal year, but it, it might be a month or two off sometimes. But either way, it's still uh, um, unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And honestly, the Illinois Comptroller's Office, knowing that they did not receive any fi uh, financial disclosures or audits, should have probably stopped the payments after fiscal year 2022, failed to make its way back to their office. And anytime you're receiving, especially with the, the Village of Dalton being a local municipality, either way, they're a local government agency. And on top of that, you know, they are bound by state statutes and even up to federal laws to provide those uh, financial disclosures and, and, and audits. And that they're required by law to have an audit by the third party neutral individual. They don't have any ties to the village of Dawson. They shouldn't have any ties to the Illinois Comptroller's Office. They should be a neutral third party that has been approved to perform these audits on these uh, government agencies, whether it be state level or even local level and 
surrender over their findings. And that should be made available to the public. Doing a FOIA request is a formality. But there are federal laws in place to say we have the right to do a FOIA, any member of the public, and to get your financials. You're a, you're a government agency. You don't have the, the, the right or authority to think that you should not have to release this. No court has ordered a seal or anything. So no, no, no ma'am, no. And they should have stopped the payments after fiscal year 2022. And, it, and I don't want to say this her entire administration because that would include the trustees. It's her and her goons that are spending like they've lost their mind and they're trying, they think that not keeping track of it and not reporting legally required documents somehow is going to work out in their favor. No, ma'am. That will be a chargeable offense and you will have many, many, many counts of that when you get indicted. Super stupid. Yes, you will. And I take, I'll take all your butt kisses with you to prison. You never get out. But that should have ended then. And you're talking about two years, essentially, of them not keeping track of anything, spending millions of dollars until there's a negative balance now in the hole for over $3.5 in the hole from coming from a six over $6.65 million surplus. That's where we are now. In the span of three calendar years, this is where y'all are. This is insanity. It's absolute insanity. So, all right, you just have to... Say something in between is so they don't block my video. We're sworn in <laughs> two fiscal years and no Good one has time. examined the tax dollars coming and going. No Captain one. Palish is the comptroller's they spokesman. Failed. If they continue failing to file the documents, they will then commence the forced audit process where we send in folks to Okay, so the forced audit process should have been done, like I said, after the first fiscal year was not submitted over uh, to Abden. Please understand, this is... There should be something in your programming and your systems that you all use to generate notifications when a certain time frame has passed by and lapsed and an entire local municipality has failed to provide financial disclosures and audits. You should get an alert from a software program saying they did not submit this red flag. Please do not send money. And then the system should automatically lock the ability to release payments out when there is no financial disclosures or audits that are being submitted. They need to upgrade their software program because this should be all automated and it should give you some sort of a, a notification and, and lock the ability to submit anything to them after they failed to do it. They should have been put on a probationary status and given a certain time frame by a state statute to say, hey, whatever this, that time frame is, because I know they don't have forever. So there's a time frame they have to turn over these documents. It should not have taken three calendar years to get to this point. So hopefully they find ways to kind of ramp up on all of this, create state statutes to keep somebody like super stupid from having a mayor and a supervisor of two different cities or towns or villages, however, positions at the same time. You should not, she should not be occupying both of those positions at the same time. She's already incompetent, but they gave her double the power for nothing. For nothing you did not earn it so honestly this there's a lot of measures in place that should come from the state legislation up there in illinois to say we got to put some checks and balances on these things after this horrific experience so far we've learned a lot out of this on what not to do moving forward that's how this should go so you know that's just kind of my opinion on that and, and being someone who has worked in finance still do and uh as a senior financial analyst you know no that there are ways to, to prevent this from happening to where you say, okay, our system will not allow us to send our payments to them. And we program it to be that way because we ain't got time for this nonsense. They're either going to send us the stuff and she's going to stop playing around with it or they're not going to get the money. You can't get government funding and then think you don't have to turn over legally mandated financial disclosures and audits. That's not how it works. And the fourth audit should have happened going back to beginning of fiscal 20 of 2023, period. So, you know, come on now.
over the books. But for now, Come the on, state man. is cutting off Dalton's offset payments. Those are funds this the state deducts from state position. payments going to people, such as income tax refunds or lottery payments. And for Dalton, that's about $135,000. Dalton is not the only municipality behind on providing audit reports, yet we're told it's the only in the state who flat out refuses to talk to the comptroller. Not My in our God. administration has it ever come to this point. They're the only local municipality in the state refusing to talk to the comptroller. Did I hear that? Wait a minute. State who flat out refuses to talk to the comptroller. Now I'm going to go back. $135,000. Dalton is not the only municipality behind on providing audit reports, yet we're told it's the only in the state who flat out refuses to talk to the comptroller. Not in our- Okay, that's part of the problem too. What? They're not the only one that's not providing the documents? What do you mean? The law says they should. Every municipality should be providing it. Are you serious? How, how long did they not know that they were not getting these documents? See, this is why I suggest that they need to upgrade their software program to automatically do this for them because either they forgot or they weren't paying attention or, you know, they just kind of used to it because they're not, they have several municipalities apparently that is not following laws. Laws, whole ass laws that exist that says that you need to surrender over these documents and these audits. You, that, this is not, this is not something that has to happen. This can be resolved and if they can't remember it they fine let a system software program do it for you come on now come on somebody has it ever come to this point <laughs> the audit will tell the truth oh yes My Lord. Uh, the audit will tell the truth uh because it is done by an independent they're not involved in the politics. David Gonzalez is the yep. mayor of Chicago they Heights, should not be. but he's also a certified public accountant who does over 75 municipal audits statewide annually. He adds an audit is a clear mm -hmm. picture of the books. Because any my mayor Lord. can go out there and say, look, my finances are great. We're doing great. You know, the, we, we, we stopped the deficit. Well, that's just a lot of talk. But okay. the independent audit is the proof of what really is happening in a town. Right. Or now, keep in mind, these audits, they are required by law. A source by close law. to the Dalton investigation <laughs> tells us that uh, it was really criticizing the comptroller's office, saying that they have really failed to reach out and check on the village well before all of these financial Thank problems you. came about. Adding that Woo. they haven't even been provided any proof that the comptroller reached out well before now. Live in the control room, Jermont Terry. Okay, so I just said that. I just said that. I just said that. They should not have gone on this long. And if they're not able to do it on their own to where they find they have a way of keeping track of things, let your software program do it for you. Stop acting like we live in ancient times. We have advanced technology here on earth. I mean, seriously. You need to have something in your software program that says we're going to have this automated to where for as, as much as we can ensure that the system does its job, if you don't send over these documents, you get a certain time frame, an automatic generated letter sent out, email notifications, reminders, whatever. And then after that time has passed by state statute, our system is going to lock it down to where you don't get any payments, period. That's it. That way you're saying we're not trying to be biased. We're not being funny about this, but we're also not playing when it comes down to this. You want our government funding up here on the state level, you're going to send over legally mandated documents and we're going to follow the law to the T. And if you cannot do that, you don't get this money. The worst part about this is that all of this in Dalton specifically is because of super stupid and her goons that are trying to protect her to keep this from coming to light about her spending money like she's lost some money that will taxpayers dollars. Him with your money, she acts like, you know, she didn't spend and was not aware of being spent unlawfully on things that they were not required. They're not given the authority to buy. You don't get to shop on Amazon and Wayfair. I don't care who you are, especially when that was not approved by the board. But this is why from day one, moving forward, I hope they understand the power of transparency and accountability. You should be able to do a four-year request and get this stuff. That's part of our federal laws regarding accountability and transparency. So this is ridiculous. This is no, 
No, the state legislation needs to be passing many, many state statutes to keep this, this checks and balances under wraps here. So that when something like this happens, it's not just with Dalton, it's other municipalities, but you shouldn't tolerate it from anybody. So guess what? Nobody gets any money. Send us the stuff that we require by law to get, and then we'll make sure it's uploaded into, into our system. And then we'll go from there. And then you'll get these payments out within the next 30 to 60 business days. Don't hold your breath. Like, that's how that conversation should have went and it should have been open and shut. They can't even do that because they have no way of keeping track, apparently, of what's going on in the comptroller's office. So, yes, they should be criticized and hopefully be pushed to do something better and come up with a reasonable, logical resolution. And if you all can't remember nothing over there, the Illinois Contrump's all Contrump told. Comptroller's office. Jesus Christ. <laughs> In the Illinois Comptroller's office to keep track of these things. Then you need a software program that does it for you. I recommend Oracle. You're welcome. They have a whole financial software base to where you can basically, this is what we want program and how we want it all set up and established. We want to be able to keep track of expenditures and our revenue and deductibles and all these things with our budgets. We want to be able to keep track of audits. We want to be able to keep track of, you know, contracts. We want to be able to keep track of everything from start to finish. And you have a software program to help you with that. That's how you do that. That's how you operate. You can't operate this way. This is so rudimentary. It's ridiculous. All right, let's get to Lori Lightfoot. Okay, so we're going to check out the um, news reporting here regarding um, at new NBC Chicago of the Lori Lightfoot investigation. Um, and we're going to kind of go over some of the numbers. And it's, it's also just proof as to, you know, the criminality of uh, super stupid Tiffany Henyard, where the hens are coming home to the yard to roost in her empty skull. That's why I say that. And to show what this Ewok is really trying to hide here. The thing about Lori Lightfoot, and I said this in several videos, I did not agree with the amount of money that she was getting paid. I just didn't. And here's the reason why. It's because with a civil and type of investigation like this, she would have to go to court to get orders just to get some level of corporation to get documents that still do not exist. And unfortunately now, she's going to have to go to those merchants, like I said, with Amazon, Wayfair, um, wherever else, Super Stupid is purchased, made payments to or whatnot with tax dollars that were not approved or authorized and was just highly illegal altogether. She would have to go to those merchants to get these statements and receipts and you know, bank statements and credit card filings. She would have to go to the bank. She would have to go to the credit card company. They have track records of this stuff. They have records of what's going on with credit card transactions. The problem is, is that a lot of these companies have guidelines and policies in place to safeguard personal data of their consumers, of their customers. So they're not going to just, even in an investigation like this, being that it's civil, it's not an order or mandate from a court. And we're not talking about a federal investigation. The FBI is still investigating. Lori Lightfoot can surrender over whatever she has so far and cooperate fully, which they are doing. However, the FBI does not just release status details and case information or investigations that they're conducting. No federal government agency really does that. So it's not until you get this indictment here where you start to kind of, you know, see the, the documentation coming from the investigation itself, unless the indictment is under seal, which I hope the card is not because I don't understand why they even try to do that. But that would be in, in the most unusual situations where you don't see any documents or what's been, you know, unveiled from the FBI investigation. Federal investigations don't work like the police department. They're the FBI. So personally, I don't want them to release information ahead of time, but that's how they move. They don't give out information. They don't tell you all what they're doing like that because you don't want to give the, the, the perpetrator, the person they're investigating a leg up. You know, they, they just, they've never operated that way. They don't move that way. So that's the frustrating part about it. And that's what Laura Lightfoot, I know, understands all too well. She understands the FBI is not going to just release invest, you know, details of the investigation. But 
she also is not able to really get the information because it's not going to come from super stupid or her goons. And the, the board of trustees can't even get this stuff. And they work under the mayor. But th she's definitely not going to get cooperation from Tiffany Henyard. So the next step will be, let's go directly to the other source of where these payments went to or these transactions are, are, are truly hosted with. And that's with the banks, the credit card companies, the receipts and the uh, orders that were placed with Wayfair and Amazon. They're going to have to get all of that from the merchants. And that might require a court order for Lori Lightfoot's investigation. How long will it take for her to get that? I mean, it could take two or three months just to get to a point where you have a hearing on that. And then you're talking about sharing the discovery, which they don't really have um, to provide. So this is the, the, the epitome of being between a, a rock and a hard place type of situation. Because you're stuck, you can't really get the information you really need to release out. And FBI can't do that either right now. And <laughs> you're going to have to get an order to get the merchants to, to release that. So she's just trying to based on what she could get do this investigation that was my issue from day one my concern rather from day one i don't have a problem with the investigation my concerns were you're not going to be able to get much in understanding how the fbi maneuver and then understanding that these merchants and the, the, the banks and the financial institutions credit card companies they may have to be compelled to do it with an order how long is it going to take to get that order so unless there's a hearing or something or a pending petition to get the stuff from the, from the courts through an order, what's the chances of it? That was my concern. All right. So either way, it's rendered some fruitful information. We're about to go over now. Let's go. Happening tonight in South Suburban Dalton, a much awaited report from former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. She's expected to release findings from her investigation into corruption claims surrounding Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Ooh, NBC 5's Regina Waldrop is live in Dalton tonight with what's expected to be a pretty tense she meeting. Care Regina? At all. <laughs> well, Stephen Lightfoot launched this probe in April. For the first time tonight, she's expected to talk about the findings and this room filling up fast with residents Ooh. who are here for it. Now, Lightfoot just made Ooh, her way into job. the room here Dalton. at the Dalton Park District. Right now, she is talking to residents who are here. The former mayor and federal prosecutor was hired by four village trustees to investigate Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard's spending habits. During her three-year tenure, Henyard has faced numerous allegations of corruption, reckless spending, and retaliation. Henyard is wow. also the focus of a number of lawsuits and federal probes. Lightfoot is said to have also looked into a controversial taxpayer-funded economic development trip to Las Vegas last year. Mayor Henyard was on that trip along with a handful of village representatives and her former assistant. That former assistant claimed while on that trip she was assaulted by a Dalton trustee and later fired. She's filed a civil lawsuit against that Henyard was, and yeah. the trustee accusing him of assault and Henyard of retaliation. The Department of Human Rights is now investigating. Now we did reach out to Woo! the Henyard administration Man. for a comment but we have yet to hear back. And if the Department of Human Rights decide to file a lawsuit that would be a federal lawsuit. So now you're talking about a federal lawsuit coming from the Department of Human Rights plus a federal lawsuit that has been filed against Dum Dum who needs more gum gum from a whole church. That's not that that's not being reported on as it should be. There's a church that filed a federal lawsuit is with the Eastern District of uh, Illinois uh, U.S. District Court. A federal lawsuit. These federal lawsuits are vital because they can also render criminal charges. Oftentimes, those investigations, those types of federal lawsuits like that, the discovery in and of itself starts to unveil things. The issue is, is that there was a non-existent finance department that they can keep track of anything. So you can't get anything out of the, the city itself. And, and Dum Dum is not going to give over anything on her own accord because she knows it's going to tell on herself. She'll be telling on herself, which at some point she's going to get indicted either way. But she knows that if I, ha if I give over anything that shows I spent money on an airline ticket, first class, and I didn't have a, a reason to use taxpayers' dollars to buy that ticket, um, yeah, no, they, they're going to just catapult this thing and have me in prison in no time. She try, she's trying to do this to cover up her dirt. Dirt that I've said has been there this whole time, but it's nice to see all this stuff finally come together in writing. How about that? But, yep. All right, let's go. This meeting gets underway at 6.30, and we'll have a live Crazy. report coming up tonight after the Olympics. 
I'm live in Dalton, Regina Waldron, NBC5 News. Look forward to your report at 10. Thank you, Regina. We have a lot more news to talk about tonight. Where did the money go in Dalton? That's the question former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot was hired to answer. And for the first time tonight, she revealed some of her preliminary results of her investigation into questionable spending by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Ooh, Henyer. She going to prison NBC5's forever. Regina Waldrop has been covering this story from the very start. It is live tonight in Dalton with some of those startling findings. Regina? Well, Stefan, there were a lot of gasps from residents who were listening to this presentation, and I talked to several people after, and they said they knew things were bad, but they did not yeah. expect this. I did. In Dalton tonight, a packed room that. for a long-awaited presentation on the village's financial crisis. Former Chicago Mayor and Federal Prosecutor Lori Lightfoot discussing her initial findings of an investigation into the spending habits of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Hanyard and her administration. Some of the key findings, no annual report or audit since 2021. Oh yeah, so here's where you see this repetitive theme of not having any financial audits or um, you know, financial disclosures or any reports whatsoever from calendar year 2021 or fiscal year 2022 in 2023 and here's where the comptroller is saying okay we're, we're withholding the money because they're not doing any they're not keeping track of anything and they don't want us to do an audit now we have to force it it should have been forced two years ago but now they're having to do that and guess what's going to happen they're going to get in there and gather what they can hopefully they have subpoena power and they just have to get it through the merchants and then they can provide that information over to Lori Lightfoot to aid in her investigation. That's what I'm hoping for. Because this is the only way you're going to get this is from those merchants and the financial institutions. And unfortunately, that might be a, a bit of a struggle. Unless there's some sort of a nuance or something in the company's policies for those merchants to say, you know, these are the exceptions or something and we'll just hand it to you. But otherwise, they, they typically don't do that. And they do that to help protect the consumer or the customer. Let's not forget the fact that the FBI does have the subpoena power that they need to get it themselves. The issue is, is that what's the likelihood of them giving a copy over to, you know, Lori Lightfoot in the, like for her investigation with the civil matter, uh, on a civil level? That, that's slim to none. Now, maybe the state government agency can get it. You know, or um, of course the FBI can if they want it. They can get a, a subpoena for it, and get the information. But can can some can somebody just send it over now to Lori Lightfoot? Probably not right now. Not the FBI anyway. So hopefully the comptroller's office will kind of kickstart their investigation, get someone in to do the audit, and then if they need to, their state government agency, if they need to get the courts to to agree in order to get it. They might be able to get it faster than Lori Lightfoot. So here you have the, the lack the lack of financial disclosures, no audits, general fund in the red by 3.65 million. Police expenditures up 21% because all these police officers can get, keep getting paid all this overtime, which is a violation of many federal uh, labor laws. And on top of that, let's not forget about the, uh, the fire department that has been completely left to hang high and dry that should definitely file a federal lawsuit against Tiffany A. Henyard. Please, Dalton Fire Department, file a federal lawsuit. Theirs would be epic. Epic. And you would definitely have a lot of criminal charges to come from that. All you're doing is basically, look, this is increasing the pressure. We got to just start filing federal lawsuits all over the place to increase that pressure to get more information out of this. Fine. These people have gone through and suffered and, and and not been able to pay bills you got vendors that were just caught in the midst of you know super stupid nonsense and bs being left out to hang out in the dark not having expenses paid for services provided but yet they're 3.65 million in the hole so this is this is the, the, the it's just absolutely absurd and I really hope the fire department filed their federal lawsuit. I mean, they would really get a lot of attention. It would definitely bring more, uh, I think, shed more light. And it's just, you know, just adding a name to the list at this point. There's a lot of people that they owe that 
It's the fault of Tiffany Hinyard. Nobody told her to hire someone to do some banners. Who needs that? Y'all 3.65 million in the hole. Who the hell need banners with your pictures on? No one. No one. So, uh, 589 checks totaling 6 million plus approved but not sent. Sent six credit cards, few receipts. Purchases under investigation. The general fund for day-to-day -day operations in the red with 3.65 million. Police department expenditures up 21% with two officers paid more in overtime pay than regular pay. As of June 18th, 589 checks totaling more than $6 million approved but not sent insane. to vendors. Six different credit cards with receipts rarely provided and purchases under investigation, including $40,000 in charges to Amazon. Oh my God, you know, that's, that's disturbing to me. Coming days. But what can I, I can assure you is the information that we have shared, that we're putting our names on, is drawn directly from the financial records of this village. I knew we were broke. And the way yeah, she broke it I down and just, uh, let the other up. residents hear what was really going on because Tiffany Henyard always talk about fake news and this is real. Oh yeah. Henyard is also the focus of a number of federal probes and lawsuits. Lightfoot says her administration did not cooperate with this investigation. Now we did reach out to the Henyard administration for a statement but have yet to hear back. As for next steps, well Lightfoot said this investigation not over. There's still a lot of work to be done out here. Some other developments tonight. The board recently approved a change to the village's credit card policy and the acting police chief was placed on leave Monday. They say he has now been terminated. There's a plan for a hiring freeze and layoffs and also oh the board Lord. says so the locks at Village Hall have people. been changed. That means elected officials out here can no longer use their Village Hall. Of course, there's so much. So this is the, the you know, like I said, this is the egregiousness of it all. She has this so-called boldness and brazenness to sit here and to try to double down on her debauchery by changing the locks. Why, why does she think she have the authority to do that? And where is the governor? Because that, that could be a matter to where he could, you know, have some legislation passed and if it means beating the court to an order, to have the, the law change to say, now you can't do it under state law. Try me. And be done with it. She should not have the authority to be able to change the locks. At all. And it makes no sense that we can't, you know, we, we can't see these state statutes passed in real time. The only thing that has happened so far where the governor, after all this time, finally came out and said something just earlier this year. Going, this is, these are issues going back to 2021. And then the governor finally said something this year. And what he said was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. And then let's not forget about the judgments that they owe. And one of them, uh, one of them being over $700,000 to a law firm. And they haven't received that money yet. And once again, the fire department needs to be filing a federal lawsuit. You got checks that have been approved to be sent out that haven't been sent out. Here's why. Because there is no money in those accounts to cover it. That's not, I, I can, outside looking in, I'm a see financial analyst, I can see this a mile away. These white collar crimes, the complexity is keeping up with the paper trail and following the money. It's not necessarily a matter of if you did something. It's just proving that you did it with proven with the documentation and, and the numbers. And then is there an, an intent to defraud and to take this money? I don't think that would be hard to, to prove either, especially if a civil proceeding. But the indictment itself, man, I cannot wait till it drops because this is ridiculous. And it's not going to get better. I mean, it, you know, not with Tiffany Hinyard. Hell no. She's going to have to get indicted. She won't have to. This is absurd. And then you have this chief of police that were fired and then brought back as the chief of police. And when he was a deputy chief of police at the time, got fired from that. And then Tyler still coming to work. Like no one told him he was fired. And then she appoints him chief of police. So you have this brazenness and, and this boldness to see him to try to defy things because she doesn't want Lacey to flip, which is not within her control either. You don't get to control that super stupid. You already got Keith Freeman flipping, and I said he was going to do it. I told you I said he is going to flip. That's not, a, that's not even an issue. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if. He is going to flip. 
That man does not look like he's fit for federal prison. Neither is Lacey. So that okay, bald head piece of crap will definitely flip. He's going to definitely flip. Plus, he's going to just see this as an embarrassing thing for him because he's been a, a, a crooked LEO from day one. And he knows he's not going to want to go to prison where he's probably sent many, many others or aided in others going uh, at the end of the day. He's going to have a walking target on his back in prison. I, even if he go to jail, he's going to be a walking target. So, yeah, no, but he need to go. He need to go. Put his ass in isolation be done with it. Man, this is insanity. So you have so many things that are just going to be coming out on this even more. Um, I'm I'm just excited about this this indictment from the FBI. And they need to come on, please speed this up. Happening out here, and we will continue to stay out here and follow this developing story. I'm live in Dalton tonight. Regina Walton, not be able ABC to lock Five News. News. Regina, My thank Lord. you. Another big story we're following this morning: the outrage and the shock in South Suburban Dalton last night during a packed meeting. That's where residents started to learn the scope of the village's financial problems. NBC 5's Jen Shantz joins us now live in studio to explain how even more issues can come to light. Certainly a possibility. Ooh, now, the person God. leading this investigation, former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who's also a federal prosecutor, says this investigation is not over yet. What she did find so far led to gasps from some residents. Things like $40,000 worth of mm -hmm. Amazon purchases using yeah, uh, the village's what did credit you buy cards, from Amazon, which girl? had receipts provided. Take a look. This was the packed room in Dalton last night where Light. So Amazon have the receipts on their end. I mean, I think, you know, some some purchases with the subpoena, they could probably go back about a good two to three years. Oftentimes the stuff is stored on these services and, and they can get the information. But like I said, Amazon, for the protection of its consumers and customers, may not release it right away without it. I'm sure they're more than willing to, to cooperate, especially seeing that it's Tiffany A. Hinyard has become a dumb global phenomenon for all the wrong reasons, but I'm sure they know what's happening and they will be more than willing to cooperate. They would just have to follow their guidelines for their customers' protection. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> ah, just get this, get, please get a court order, Lori Lightfoot. Spare us all, get a court order. But they would have it on their end to get those receipts from them. They would just have to go to the merchants. That's it. But presented those initial findings into the spending habits of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her administration. Lightfoot's findings that. showed there's been no annual report of audits for the village since 2021. The general fund, which covers day-to-day -day operations, has been steadily declining. And so I think that, um, I don't know if this video is kind of like going over the same information, but um, let me just kind of skip forward to some of the numbers so you all can see this plan in place of a hiring freeze and layoffs. NBC5 has reached out to Henyard for a statement on all of this. We've yet to hear back. And on top of this, the village board says locks at Village Hall have been changed for at least the third time. They that means elected have, officials don't have access. To keep that from Still a lot ever of chaos, again. a lot of unanswered questions here, and potentially more figures to be sorted out. Something yeah, we will be following be very occur. closely. Evrod Michelle. We want to highlight a couple of um, credit card purchases. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, wait there. Who said that? <laughs> You're having the same. See, you got Amazon, Target, Walgreens. What did they buy from Walgreens? Wayfair, Walgreens, Giftly.com. What the heck is Giftly.com? Best Buy. See, this, and this is this is the thing. You got these multiple purchases. If you all look at the dates, you got December, like, let's go to Best Buy. December 11th, December 23rd, December 23rd, December 23rd. These purchases are being broken up. Why? Why are they being broken up? $400, $800, Was this methodical? To have these purchases like this, three of them in the same day that I'm seeing so far in my video, just based on what I can visually see. Three in the same day. But yet you got, look at this, $33,000 from Amazon in the same day that posts the same day. $33,000, then $47,15, then $5,709, $5,609. What, what are they doing to break up these purchases like this? Then you got Target. What you get from Target? 
Wayfair $7,699.99. What kind of crap? Is that including taxes? I, I'm just baffled at the numbers. But this is what you this is what they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to go to all of these merchants and get the receipts from the merchants. And you're going back 2023, so they'll be able to get the stuff that was just last year, not even like January, May, June, uh, July, uh, September, October, December. So it's not like every single month last year, but it's still information that I'm sure these merchants will still have on file or you know on a server somewhere where they can provide over this stuff because it's not that far back. But this is this is the ridiculousness of it all. I told you I she was stealing money. It's just a matter of getting it all on paper to figure out how. And these receipts, just get them from the merchants. Go get an order. Go get a subpoena. Go get it from the merchants. You're not going to get it from her. Because for some reason, you think that no one can just go to the merchants. You just get in contact with Target, Amazon, and Wayfair, and Giftly, and Best Buy. Get Go get in contact with them and say, hey, we need receipts. What do you all need to give it to us? This is insane. <laughs> Wayfair. <laughs> Wayfair, you just got what I need. You got just what I need. We were very concerned to see the goodness with tax dollars here for you um, that were booked on uh, January fifth of twenty twenty. Unbelievable, man. That's roughly Unbelievable. forty thousand dollars. A little more than that. And credit card purchases on Amazon in the same day. My lord. <laughs> and our understanding, I'm not laughing understanding at the money. I'm laughing at the person that said Wayfair. <laughs> oh my God! That's just part. That's, that should be a meme. Wayfair. <laughs> this is insane. This woman is going to prison. Tiffany A. Henniard is going to prison. For the rest of a natural born life. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be real upset. Because she's going to try to plead not guilty. And then try to decry ignorance. And, and tactical stupidity. And say I didn't know what was happening. No. No. Go up here before that judge if you want to. And run your mouth in there. They're going to have you behind held in contempt. Then lock you up from there. Either way. I'm happy either way. 93 days in jail and contempt. During a hearing. Or in the end when you're still found guilty <laughs> hopefully on all counts of those charges that you got coming down the pipeline um I, i'll take it I, i'll take it because this is absurd this is absolutely absurd not having just hemorrhaging money on stuff account these are somebody using one of the credit cards and charging these amounts oh these my ones. god we suspect we're going to see as you can see expenditures at target Walgreens. Um, this is nuts. Spot, a number of charges that Wayfair. raise questions <laughs> in our mind. Are these legitimate purchases using the credit card? We know they're not. They're not warranted or legitimate. But we've also found in the credit cards, um, I know that there's been a lot of interest in travel. And we are highlighting here on this slide some of the travel that is reflected in the we are following some breaking news out of suburban Dalton. So that so far, that's that's you know, and there was a uh, slide with the presentation. As a matter of fact, hold on, let me put it up. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm gonna, I just want to kind of touch on this portion regarding the fiscal year, uh, the time frame, like what what their uh, fiscal year uh, time frame is, and then of course the expenditures regarding the overall going from a surplus to a deficit. I just want to kind of highlight that. Um, there, there's a, this, I, I don't know what, what news station this is. Um, I forgot, but there's the full release, uh, meeting that is, I know on the Fox 32 Chicago news and I want to say NBC Chicago, but I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, WGLN, something to that extent, have covered it. You have several news outlets that, uh, that cover this, but I wanted to just specifically kind of hone in on the failure to hire the financial staff uh, the, in the finance department, as well as the overall expenditure and how you see this surplus go from over $6 million to 
a negative 3.65 something to that extent within a matter of two years. So let's just check out this portion of the uh, town hall meeting. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I just want to highlight these couple points here. So let's jump into the specifics. Uh, many of you know that the uh, village's fiscal year runs from May 1 to April 30th. So it's May 1 to April 30th. That's the fiscal year. Two years. Um, certain financial disclosures are mandated under state law that the village reports to uh, the controller of the state each fiscal year. Um, two now you all see... This, this came out, what, two weeks ago? Now you see how this connects to the comptroller. Now you get to see that connection because these financial documents should have went to the Illinois State Comptroller's Office going back to fiscal year 2022. And those, like I said, are legal mandated required documents. She did not have a choice or an option to surrender over not only just the financial reports, but also the audits. So... Just so you all can see this connection. This is two weeks ago with um, Lori Lightfoot's, you know, uh, presentation of what she has so far in her investigation been able to uncover. But now you see this tie-in to the Illinois Comptroller, which I hope now opens up an investigation with, you know, the the office of the uh, Comptroller and have them kickstart off, you know, something on their level to hopefully get some of these receipts and all these things through, uh, if they have to do through a subpoena or whatever, they would be able to get that a lot easier. And then hopefully can add on to federal criminal charges or have the attorney general finally get off their behind and do something and bring forth criminal charges against uh, Super Stupid as well. That's what I'm hoping for. It can be done. It can be done. And you see the citation there, um, it's a state law, and the audited financial yep. statements. The village has not, and let me repeat that, the village has not complied with these statutory requirements since fiscal year 2021. There's no annual financial report available after 2021, and no audited financial statements um, uh, after 2021. So what that means is absurd. The is absolutely absurd. has not been thoroughly audited by a CPA, but we do have information coming from an, uh, an entity that essentially serves um, as the finance department um, of the village. Historically, from what we've seen, the village has had small or no um, full-time financial staff. Um, at various times, even though statutorily, uh, there's a provision for a city treasurer. None exists and has it for some time. There's a provision for uh, a finance director. There's been intermittent people that have served that role, but that role has been taken as of May of this year. And before that, the person who held the role started working part-time as of the end of December of so, so as you can see, given the lean or no financial staff, there's a lot of dependence upon the John Casper accounting firm, which has functionally um, operated as the village's finance department for some time. Wow. What we have uh, examined our... So basically, they had a budget to hire staff, and they didn't even use the money in that budget to hire the staff. So now you're talking about, what, possible embezzlement? You know, and then if these monies move from account to account to account, that's money laundering. And and on top of that, you had individual people using the credit cards for the village of Dalton to make these purchases with those merchants, with Wayfair and Amazon and Best Buy, Giftly or whatever that is. You have those being ordered from individuals, not through an expense from the village of Dalton at all. It's as if someone, like imagine Super Stupid opened up a Best Buy account and she wanted to order something from Best Buy, but yet she used the village of Dalton's credit cards to do that. As opposed to her, but it came through her personal account that she has set up with Best Buy. So now you can understand the complexity of this and them half-heartedly and half-assed trying to maneuver the system and still get caught doing it because they're not very smart. 
So instead of it coming through the village of Dalton as an actual expense that the board was supposed to approve, you're talking about individuals, some random citizen using the village of Dalton's credit cards. I don't care if it's a police or LEO, which makes it worse, Rylan, because they should definitely get a lot of prison time for that. And, or you had just regular individuals that may or may not even work with uh, Super Super using the Village of Dalton credit card under their own profiles to make these orders. They could have did it as a guest checkout. Doesn't matter. It was not through the Village of Dalton either, and it was not approved. And now they don't even want to provide receipts for it as if they're the only persons that can provide receipts. You see the buffoonery of this crap? This half has attempt to sit here to try to circumvent something just to embezzle funds from the government. You think that, come on now, the controller should have never sent money over to them automatically without them sending over financial disclosures and audits. But what they've gathered, they got from the auditing firm that have been the only ones able to even do some sort of an audit because they don't have a finance department in the village of Dalton. Even when they budget was approved to hire somebody and then the people she has, she just kind of weeded them out. Come on, she need to go to prison for the natural for the rest of her natural born life. Oh, Tiffany A. Hayard deserves to be in prison twenty two prison twenty twenty five. Oh. And as I mentioned, due to the village's failure to uh, conduct an audited financial statement, there we have to caveat the accuracy of the information. Unbelievable. So based upon uh, lining out not only the monthly reports, but looking at bank statements that match up with the information uh, that's in the financial reports. And we had the opportunity uh, to talk to some of the folks at uh, the Casper firm who are responsible for managing the finances of the village. And that worked in the As of um, May 30th of this year, the village's general fund was in a net Deficit position, meaning it's the part here you all pay attention to. Funds in that um, general fund. As we mentioned, the general fund is used to account for the majority of the village's day to day uh, operations, including payroll and vendor payments. The village's special revenue fund and debt service fund, however, are in a positive position, but each of those funds are restricted funds, meaning you cannot borrow from one. To get to the other. And that nope. is causing part. So here's another thing. When you have budgets in place, what you do is you typically set up miscellaneous accounts, right? For expenses. What's called the charge against that account. Basically, where you're saying, I have, I'm trying to keep it simple. Expense cat expense uh, account one, two, three, and then it's expense account four, five, six. Typically, what you see is a charge against one account or the other, allowing funds to flow from one account to another based on the, the purpose of those expense accounts overall. And when you have some sort of a miscellaneous account or some account where you have unrestricted funds to help fund other accounts, you're able to do this charge against that account. Imagine you had two checking accounts with their bank. You have what's called overdraft protection. That overdraft protection says in the event one account is overdrafted, this other account will be connected to it to automatically pull the funds from the second account to keep the first account from going into a deficit or into the negative. So that charge against one account to another on a budget is no different than having overdraft protection on your two personal checking accounts with a bank. So what she's saying is they don't have any accounts in their budgets to allow funds to flow from one account to another. And that's part of the problem. For a situation like this might also be part of the resolution to keep that from happening so that you don't have this just continuous vile use of funds like this. 
And honestly, that process should be automatic. It should go from unrestricted to restricted. Once the system starts to see some sort of pattern of, of purchases that are not being approved by at least two or three members from the, uh, the board of trustees themselves, along with, you know, a mayor if that was that's not corrupt and a piece of crap and a soulless miscreant. So this is part of that problem that caused some of these accounts on their budgets to hit this deficit. They didn't have that, what you can see as overdraft protection for the most part. All right. Uh, the financial crisis. What you actually can see is um, a graphic that They don't have the money to even do that either at this point. April, where the bill started as of April of 22 with a positive of $5.6 million to the general fund, and where we are as of uh, May of 2020. This is crazy. Which is a negative 3.65 million. Wow. So what you're seeing here is the table here regarding their general fund. They went from having a surplus of 5.61 million down to a deficit of 3.65 million. And that gives you that 9.26 million um, overall that's been spent. So for her to go out on Roland Martin talking about, oh, it's only a deficit of 2 million. It shouldn't be a deficit at all. You dumb Ewok. There should not be a deficit at all. You had a surplus of $5.61 million. You shouldn't even have a deficit. But if you think about how much has been spent, you got to spend the surplus to get to a net value of zero. And then spend an additional $3.65 million to get into that deficit. Oftentimes when you're doing budgets, you want it to net out and balance at the very least, but you always want to have some level of surplus. They had a surplus of $5.61 million. That could have went towards a numerous amounts of programs and opportunities to help people in the village of Dalton that have been completely hemorrhaged because of super stupid mayor Tiffany Henyard. So now you have a 9.26 million expense that has occurred in three years. <laughs> three years that surplus as of actually two years as of April 2022 to May 2020 so here's, here's the issue like I said that the 5.61 plus the 3.65 gives you that 9.26 so that's why in the financial world you will see this as you know, an expenditure of over $9.26 million. And this is as of May, 2024, it's August. So I'm sure she's probably tried to hemorrhage more even after May, after this presentation. And the worst part is that they still don't get receipts. They don't have credit card statements. They don't have any of that. And they're not, you know, Henyard is not giving up any of this nonsense, super, super things she doesn't have to. And forgets that this could still come from the merchants. This could still, the, the credit card transactions could still be acquired from the credit card companies. Just have to be done through a court order subpoena. But this is the issue here where people are saying that she has been stealing millions of dollars. You're not just in a deficit. You had a surplus that would just dwindle through two, two years. And, and look, the biggest jump being from 2.66 million surplus to that negative 3.38 in one year, as of April 2023, 2.66 mil surplus. April 2024, 3.38 deficit. 3.38 million deficit. So they spent the remaining 2.66 and then went into the hole by 3.38. That's almost 6 million. That's what? About a good, yeah, $6 million, 6.04 million. That's where we are now. 6.14, 6.04 million. From one year of expenses that put them into this big deficit. And the worst part is, like I said, they, they, they didn't get the credit card statements and the bank statements. They didn't get all that information. So if you're wondering why 589 checks are sitting somewhere, 
that had not even been dispersed out and paid out to vendors that were approved to be paid out. It's because there's no money. <laughs> Those checks will bounce. And I told you all when I did the video about the fire uh, department filing the, um, that bringing forth that complaint. I said then they're going to have to file a federal lawsuit against Super Super. And they need to target her specifically. Because this is all because she knows she has been hemorrhaging and stealing money like this. It just needed to be on in writing on the record. That's what it need, that that's that's the most crucial part. Having the evidence to follow the money. This is where they are now, and and it's all because of her. This is appalling and egregious. And I'm sure this could have been stopped if they had the information they need, but now we're here. This is this is where we are now. I think that the Dalton trustees are a, a lot more wise and smart about how they should operate and maneuver when they know that they are legally required to give uh, disclosures and audits and to have those things done. But felt they were kind of just stuck in a, a rock in a hard place after trying to have a recall and that didn't go through. The next step should have been, we're filing a lawsuit against the mayor. A federal lawsuit. We want this. We want federal charges to come out of this at some point. The FBI took a minute to get to, to the point where they opened an investigation. You know, they immediately went out, did raids, and got subpoenas and stuff. You know, because they had the subpoena power. So they, they went and acted on that. But it, it seems like this should have happened back in 2022. It, this should have happened a long time ago. So, so much damage has been done. How do you recover from this? Well, you can either get a bailout from the federal government or even the state government, but they're not going to want to do that too much without having the documents, the artists done. And that artist is going to reveal a lot more. So, ooh, child, this, this is a hot mess and a half times two. <laughs> yeah, let that math blow your mind. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. All right. Turning now to the increasing expenditure of the village. So I'm just going to pause it there because, I, like I said, I don't want to go through the whole video. But, you know, this is leading to them having to possibly have hiring freezes and layoffs. Because you got you to gotta start clearing out some of these expenses. I don't even know how people are still getting paid at this point, including the trustees and super stupid herself. They need to garnish her wages or put a freeze on her assets and not pay her and let her feel the pinch of this for real. Seriously, before they lay off anyone else, they need to not pay her because this is insanity. It's absolutely absurd. She's getting over $300,000 of annual salary information unless she's lying like hell to the irs and think that the department of labor is going to cover her tracks by lying for her uh for her about her income we, either way somebody can get her true income they're gonna have to get all her bank account information anything i don't care if it's in the name of her and her daughter get every single account that she remotely could be connected to and put a freeze on it because this is ridiculous now people are going to lose their jobs over this. You know how many more lawsuits you're going to have for being laid off due to her incompetence, super stupid incompetence and criminal, criminal activity costing other people their jobs. We want to talk about fake news and all this other stuff. No, you messing with real lives of people who need real money to pay their real bills. That's what, that's what's happening here. You can say whatever's fake all day. No one gives two cracks about that. But you're messing with people's money and livelihoods and they're not able to pay real bills now because they've been laid off or they're having their, their hours reduced. Or now you have people that are trying to get jobs, can't get jobs because you've stolen so much money, hemorrhaged through $9.26 million over the span of just two years. And this is as of May 2024. Not the day that this presentation was done. 
And as you all can see, because, you know, for some reason, there's no state statute saying mayors should not be able to change locks on buildings arbitrarily because they don't like something no one gives craps about. That now you have this meeting having to occur in a separate venue as opposed to the town hall that they should be able to go to and have these meetings and discussions and presentations without any restrictions whatsoever. This is unlawful. What is going on? Why is there not more being done about this? State statutes need to be passed to prevent her from changing the locks ever again. Period. This is ridiculous, bro. <laughs> Good God. And it's just seeming to be going on. I know it looks like it's going on untethered and unchecked. Because nothing's happening when these things happen. You're not seeing any immediate results of let's take action to prevent them from changing the locks for the fourth time. Let's make sure she does not do that. And if she does it, she pulls the stunt. We got a whole court order. We will ensure she's capious. And we held her, held her in contempt of this order. Because now you're sitting here pissing off a judge in the court of law. That, that's what, need, what is needed. A court order saying you are not allowed to do this anymore. Especially when we know you can't give us good reason to even legally justify this nonsense in the first place. So, no. No, no. Man, this is getting out of control. And I really hope, like I said, that the Illinois Comptroller's Office decides to launch an investigation. The State Department should have already intervened. The governor is still being way too complacent for my comfort and, and, and happiness at this point. And she's still running amok and unleashing hell on earth. And I just I honestly hate that people are, are faced with the layoff and reduction of hours. The police chief is still incompetent and he's running around and being indicted now. He's going to flip. He does not look like he's the type that is going to be fit for prison either. He's certainly going to have a target on his back if he does go. And th this is this buff buffoonery is going to be very difficult to get Dalton out of this deficit. It's going to be better because people aren't even going to want to trust him at this point, let alone try to bail him out financially. It's going to be hard to trust it. And it's not everybody's fault. It's You see clearly whose fault it is. And that's super soup. You want to be the mayor? Then you have to take responsibility like one. Otherwise, stop playing mayor and go sit the hell down somewhere. Take your black ass back to your home planet. This is insane. So, all right. I, I, I think I feel caught up by now. <laughs> to be able to, you know, go to the, to the next new topic of discussion with them. Until... This heifer is indicted and, and is starting, uh, is relinquished from the mayoral position and the supervisor of Thorn Thorn Thornton Township position. And um, we, we can start following this in, in uh, you know, from inside a court of law, hopefully where she will be criminally charged soon. She going to have to be, they going to have to hurry this up. All right. That's all I got for today. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section. Please hit the like button because that means something to YouTube. And subscribe if you want. I encourage you all to um, have some healthy dialogue. This has been infuriating for a lot of people. I'm quite frankly, you know, I have no respect for Super Stupid and I never did. And I don't owe her that. No one does. No one owes her anything. Um, and I hope that the fire department decides to file a federal lawsuit. That needs to be that, that needs to happen. It just needs to happen. And I can tell you all, if once it happens, perfectly it does, once it happens, it's going to have a huge impact. And then you all will see, you know what? They look close at it. This thing is really bringing some momentum to this. And it's, it's not going to even be something that can be ignored. All right. So either way, you guys take care. Let it look out. Peace.